Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If it's your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you, and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, we're back in the uh, the studio setting, which is great for our weekend video. As many of you may know that follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or here on the channel, um, I, I have not been so well. Um, I'm still recovering from my injury. Um, so unfortunately I'm not back on form, I'm, I'm not out in the field playing just yet, but hopefully I am getting better every day, so hopefully I'll be able to get back out on the field soon. I'm still uploading our regular gameplay videos, as you may have noticed, midweek. Uh, I've got a lot of footage from the Gathering, the Highlander event that uh, Tazbo Airsoft did, that was over three days, so I'm slowly putting some of that footage out on our weekday videos. But we're hopefully back to normal with our weekend videos where every weekend as many of you already know or if you're new to the channel you may not know every weekend we'll look to discuss some aspect of airsoft whether that be tech gear replica reviews that type of thing so if you're not subscribed to the channel then please do get subscribed to the channel and you won't miss any of my uploads my weekly gameplay videos and our weekend airsoft discussions so with uh, that out of the way and uh, was well, getting back to normal here. What, what are we going to have a look at today? Well, one of the things that I see a lot of, uh, of discussion about on the communities and seemingly is the fix for all <laughs> when somebody has a fault on one of their AEGs or one of the replicas, the, the common answer seems to be stick a MOSFET in it. And there's a particular MOSFET that people usually recommend, which apparently will, will cure all faults with your Airsoft replica specifically your electric replicas. Now, what I wanted to do today was just do a, an introduction to Airsoft MOSFETs, uh, what they are, why we want them, what they do, what's available out there. In a later video, I will show you how to install a MOSFET, but I'm gonna be working with the type of MOSFETs that I use in my replicas, and my opinion on MOSFETs. Now, I will openly admit that I haven't got experience with every MOSFET on the market. Uh, some people have used MOSFETs that I haven't. I'm not going to say that any particular MOSFET is bad. I'm just going to give you my knowledge that I've built up over the years as, as working with electrical systems in my day job and also from repairing AEGs and, and modifying my own replicas. And what, we, what I've gathered uh, is the best thing to do with MOSFETs and, and where we stand on them. So, what is a MOSFET? Well, a MOSFET, if we want to get into it in a, a very technical term, is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transmit transistor. That's, that's what a MOSFET is. Uh, they can also be known as a metal oxide silicon transistor. Um, that's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> that's not really something we need to know, but, but that's what a MOSFET is. And what that basically means is it can do a number of effects. Uh, MOSFETs are, are used very heavily in the electronics industry. When the MOSFET was first developed, it kind of revolutionized the, uh, the electronics industry. It was all part of the big silicon rush. It's used in most electronics today. It can be used for various different things. Um, but the, the main thing that it, it's used for, in our case, and the advantage that a MOSFET has that makes them useful for us with our automatic electric uh, guns, is that it requires very little input current to control a load current. Now, again, that might sound a bit technical, but what that basically means is, is that it can control a heavy output with a very, very small input. So it acts like a switch. A switch that doesn't require much power at all, or current is what we're mainly concerned with. It does not require a lot of current in order to switch a larger current on, if that makes sense. So where that comes into um, our automatic electric guns is, as many of you may know, or if you don't know, when you pull the trigger on a, a, an AEG that isn't installed with a MOSFET, what you're basically doing is, is you're closing the circuit there. You're, you're putting the switch on. When you pull the trigger, you're turning the switch on, and when you do that, 
the load from the battery, the current, it goes straight through those trigger contacts as soon as they close and into your motor, which causes the motor to spin and that causes you to cycle your gearbox and fire that BB or continuously cycle and fire lots of BBs in the case of full auto. Um, when you pull that switch, you can get a number of effects occurring that can cause damage to the switch, uh, which is arcing primarily because your, your motor is, it will only draw the current that it needs, but it, it is capable of drawing a lot of current, especially if there's a fault in your replica, it can draw even more current. Um, but ultimately, all of that load, all of that current is drawn through your trigger contact at the moment you pull the trigger. And just before the contacts make, the electricity can jump, if you like, to put it simply, which is known as arcing. And if you get arcing, then you get an incredible amount of heat, an enormous amount of heat, uh, which can damage your trigger contacts. So over time, it'll cause scorching, it'll cause a loss of contact surface on your trigger contacts and eventually your trigger contacts will fail and that is the biggest thing you'll hear about uh, a MOSFET preventing. Um, so that's where MOSFETs come into our automatic electric guns. What they basically do is, is they act as a switch for that heavy current. So when you pull the trigger, your trigger contacts no longer have the load going through them, they just have signal wires back to your, your MOSFET and all that happens is a very, very small current is put across those trigger contacts, which in effect tells the MOSFET to allow the current to flow to your motor. So your trigger contacts are effectively bypassed by that heavy current. And obviously the MOSFET therefore protects those trigger contacts. That isn't to say that a MOSFET can't burn out. Um, they can and they do. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the ultimate goal is, is that we're protecting those trigger contacts preventing us having to open up the gearbox and replace them or clean them. Um, and that, that's basically where MOSFETs come from. They do much more than that, but we'll, we'll get into that. So, ultimately, why do we want a MOSFET in our AEG system? Well, there's a number of reasons. As we've just mentioned, it protects the trigger contacts. One of the side effects of having a, a MOSFET using a very low current and acting as a signal gate is that uh, you get a much quicker trigger response. It is noticeable. Um, I had my doubts when I first started modifying replicas and upgrading them, uh, but you can notice a difference when you install a MOSFET correctly. Um, you should get a, a notable increase in trigger response. You, you know, it will cycle a little bit quicker um, because you, you're getting that quicker reaction as it were there's much less resistance in the system the power is going directly to the motor where it needs to be it's not going through trigger contacts there's less points of resistance and failure so you do get a quicker trigger response some mosfets uh, are programmable some are more programmable than others some will allow you to do free round burst some of you allowed to do multiple round burst they'll allow you to change what your fire selector does in the case of a, a fully automatic replica, they'll allow you to change it so it goes to five shot burst or all sorts of things really, you can adjust the trigger pull on some of them. Um, the, the, the programming options for, for some MOSFETs these days are ridiculous. Now, that's not actually the MOSFET that's doing that, it's the, it's the printed circuit board that the MOSFET is sitting on. They put additional functions and just call the whole thing in general a, a MOSFET, but it's not. The MOSFET is just that gate transistor that allows the, the low current switching to occur so that you can bypass the high current away from your trigger contacts. Okay, um, some have a, a pre-built fuse in them. Now, you may know that a lot of uh, our AEGs will have an inline fuse near your battery when you plug in your battery in. A lot of people will argue that that fuse is one, a point of failure, and two, creates high resistance in your circuit, in your system, which can reduce your uh, cycle times and so your trigger response and your rate of fire. And they'll also argue that, uh, you know, that <laughs> ultimately you don't need them. Now, me personally, I like to have a fuse in the system. If a fault develops, I'd rather blow a few pence of fuse than blow a 40 or 50 pound motor or anything else that could melt down or even your MOSFET. Now, some MOSFETs do come 
with a thermal fuse which basically means that uh, they will protect your system and themselves so you don't need a, an external fuse with them and they reset themselves so if the fuse goes it doesn't blow it just expands and breaks the electrical contact and then once you let it cool down it's ready to go again but obviously you've still got a fault somewhere in the system if that keeps happening so that, that's an advantage of them as well and then you get things like active brake um, is another thing you'll hear a lot about with MOSFETs and that tends to be something that people suggest as a, a fix-all uh, for a lot of faults people have. Basically what that does is it, it allows the motor to cycle once and to be technical on it it reverses the polarity on the road motor to stop it instantly. Now there's a lot of people who argue that puts more load on your battery, puts more load on your electrical system in general, puts more load on your motor for certain. To be honest, if you're not using aggressive active brake, then I can't see it wearing your motor out incredibly quickly compared to not using active brake. I myself don't use active brake. I try to make my gearboxes work without requiring that. But it basically prevents overspin. Uh, if you're firing on semi and you're finding that the, the gearbox is overspinning, then active brake can prevent that. It means you're only firing one shot instead of two. Uh, or indeed, in some cases, you can get uh, lockups and things like that. An active brake can certainly help with that. You know, if you notice, you have to flick back into fully auto, fire a few rounds, and back into semi, and it works again. And sometimes active brake can help out with with those kind of issues. But if your gearbox is set up properly, then hopefully you you shouldn't have those kind of issues. So that's that's another feature that uh, that MOSFETs can come with. They they do come with a lot of things. So, with all that techno babble out of the way, what type of MOSFETs do we get? Well, if you're in the market for a MOSFET, first of all, check whether your replica comes with a pre-installed MOSFET. A lot of replicas these days, even at the lower end of the scale, even at the more affordable end of the scale, they will come with a MOSFET. They'll have a pre-installed MOSFET, uh, such as the G&G &G ARP9 that I'm such a fan of, that comes pre-installed with what we call them a, an electric trigger unit, which is micro switches, uh, instead of the trigger contacts that we mentioned. Uh, but it also comes pre-installed with a MOSFET as well. And that MOSFET is programmable as well. It can be programmed to free round burst instead of full auto, um, which I don't use that myself personally, but if it's something that you fancy, uh, then that replica comes with a MOSFET that's capable of doing that already. Uh, a lot of the Spetner Arms range come pre-installed with gate MOSFETs, um, you know, straight from the factory. So that's the first thing to do, is check whether you have a, a MOSFET installed. And if it does already have a MOSFET installed, I would suggest that you don't really need to do anything more from the MOSFET side of things. Uh, a lot of people might want to upgrade their MOSFET, They'll pull the MOSFET out and put something more expensive in that gives them more programming options. And yeah, if you want those programming options, then that, that's fine. You can do that. But me personally, I like a basic MOSFET that increases my trigger response, allows me to run more current through the system, and isn't going to burn out my trigger contacts. So I, I go a bit more basic with my MOSFETs. So if you've got a MOSFET installed, I always think if it isn't broke, then, then don't fix it. Uh, you've already got that MOSFET installed. So do check your replica, make sure it has one. That's the first type of MOSFET you'll get. Sometimes they'll install these gate items. Uh, I know one of the Spetners that I had came pre-installed with a gate ASR MOSFET. It's a very good MOSFET, so I, I felt no need to change it. Um, and then you've got your basic plug and play MOSFETs, which are next. Um, this particular MOSFET here, this is a gate MERV 3.2. This particular MOSFET has more than one configuration. If you, if you want to install it to operate as a MOSFET and protect your trigger unit, then you have to wire it in. Um, you have to solder it across the trigger, trigger contacts. You have to replace the wiring so that the wires run straight to your motor from the MOSFET and obviously the signal wires now run to your trigger, which means that the trigger load is very minimal and all of the load is sent directly to the motor via your MOSFET. Now that's how I have my MERF set up. Um, I will do a video at some point showing you how to wire a MOSFET in. Um, 
it's a bit more involved there. I've got a couple of replicas that I need to install MOSFETs on. So when I install the MOSFETs on those replicas, I'll make sure I video it and I'll do you a video showing you exactly how to solder one in. It's not difficult, it's not that hard. If you, if you can open a gearbox on a version two, then it's easy. Uh, if you've never opened a gearbox before, if you're on a version three gearbox, for example, such as in AK, in AK you, you don't actually particularly need to open the gearbox to, to wire the MOSFET in. So some are easier to do than others, but we'll get into that when I do a, a video on how to do it. So back to this one. So number of ways to do it. Now, the type of MOSFET I'm referring to when I say basic plug and play, this MOSFET can act like that. So basically, if you've got Dean's connectors on your replica, you plug one end into the replica, one end into your battery, and that is the MOSFET running. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to open your gearbox or anything. You just plug this in line between your battery and your replica, and it will give you the ability to program. Uh, you'll be able to program three round burst, five round burst, whatever you want. And that's just by plugging it in. It won't act as a MOSFET. The MOSFET part of it is doing nothing. Um, the only way your MOSFET does anything is if it's bypassing your trigger contacts and doing what it's designed to do and acting as a transistor, a switch. Um, but if you plug this in as a basic plug and play, it's sold as a plug and play MOSFET, but what it's basically doing is giving you the ability to program certain features into your replica that you didn't have before. Now, if all you're after is those features and you're not bothered about the MOSFET, um, then great, that'll be ideal for you. It takes no skill or knowledge whatsoever. You just plug it in, plug your battery in, and then that's you aware you're able to program this circuit board to allow you to do as many round bursts as you want and that type of thing. But you won't get the benefits of the MOSFET. So some, aren't able to be wired in like this one. This can be wired in as a full MOSFET as well. Um, some will just be plug and play units that allow programming. Um, and you'll see those online. If that's all you want programming, that's absolutely fine. But remember, it will not act as a MOSFET. It will not give you the benefits of a MOSFET, okay? So next up after that, you have the full solder in MOSFET, which that can act as uh, the vast majority of ones that you'll see will be that type of MOSFET that you'll have to solder across the trigger contacts, rewire or do a single wire. As I say, I'll get into the single wire and double wire signal wires when we do uh, a video showing you how to install one of these. This is just an introduction to what they are. Um, this, again, is a Pico. It's a really, really small MOSFET. I got this for my M14 because it's so small so I can fit it in line. Uh, this MOSFET is tiny and this has to be soldered in but it'll still do the functions that I need it to do, which is act as a gate and take all the load off my trigger contacts so they don't burn out. So that's that's another type. Now, the, the next type is you can get MOSFETs that replace your entire trigger assembly. Now, with those, that's gonna be a gearbox open job and you're gonna to have to change out your trigger contacts. They usually come pre-wired so they'll have a wiring loom on them, uh, the ones that use a traditional trigger trolley, and the MOSFET will be part of the board that your, your trigger trolley is sitting on. Um, those are very neat. That's primarily the reason you do one of those. If you're limited on space, then it means that your MOSFET is within the gearbox. Uh, very neat, installed, you're not gonna see it in the buffer tube in the case of an AR replica. Uh, you're not gonna see it in your battery compartment. It's basically gonna be within the gearbox and you'd use one of those if you want something that's a very neat install and you still only have the two wires coming out the, the back of the replica, the front of the replica, wherever your battery compartment may be. And then the final type would be your, your pinnacle uh, of MOSFET systems. And that's things like the Gate Titan and the Leviathan from Jeftron, for example. These replace your trigger contacts completely and they normally replace it with an optical system. And depending on how advanced the system is, it'll have an optical sensor for your sector gear, uh, so it can monitor the cycling rate of your replica. It basically can monitor everything. You usually have uh, programmer cards with those, or you'll be able to link to it via USB or Bluetooth to a computer system or a smartphone. And basically it'll give you all sorts of data on your replica allows endless programming options. Um, the optical triggers, for example, you can get very fine hair triggers 
do lots of work uh, getting it just how you want it but obviously for those kind of things they can be tricky to install uh, there are a number of issues that can occur when you're installing them if they fit straight in if you're lucky and your gearbox casing can accept it straight in then you know they're brilliant uh, but they are very very expensive and at the upper end of really from my own personal opinion what you need um, I, I really don't need that level of programming to go and play airsoft uh, her triggers are nice I think they're good for showing off <laughs> um, you know they, they are very cool I won't knock them if you decide to have one of those then you know fair play to you that's brilliant uh, but for me and my play style I, I just don't need that level of control um, I also don't need that level of her trigger I'm, I'm not really bothered by it and for the amount of money they cost they're stuck in that particular replica I have quite a large collection I like to be able to move my stuff around so let's get into pricings and that's uh, that's what we're going to be looking at here now from what we've just said pricing wise um, you can go quite a big gap you've got to gate a reason I keep going on about gate is I primarily use gate MOSFETs uh, you might find different prices for other MOSFET manufacturers I like gate it's only a personal opinion I'm not saying they're any better than any of the other MOSFETs it's just that's what my experience is with that's what I use uh, so for example at the bottom of the gate range you've got the gate nano ASR and those you can pick those up for pounds sterling British pounds about 19 pounds to 20 pounds so very cheap uh, you can then move up to the anti-brake uh, the active brake version of that so it's the same MOSFET but with active brake that jumps you up to 27 pounds roughly so a bit of a jump but still very affordable uh, you can then go for something like this if you're after something very small to get Pico believe it or not the Pico is actually 27 to 28 pounds so again if you limited for space you're going to pay a premium for having something as small as that that is an absolutely tiny MOSFET if you want to step up to the MRF and have some programming options such as burst control and that type of thing um, you're going to be looking at a little bit more money again 39 to 40 pounds um, so not a huge amount of money still very affordable considering you get programming options and it acts as a full MOSFET or if you can you don't want to or you don't aren't able to wire it in as a MOSFET you can just use the programming functions as is and you don't need to wire it in for 40 pounds uh, you can then move up to what I would call a gateway uh, between the two which would be a warfet uh, now a warfet you're looking at a lot more money you're looking at about 50 to 6 well but between 55 to 60 pounds uh, but then you'll need a programming card to take full advantage of its programming features and you're looking at about 27 to 28 pounds for a programming card sometimes more just depends on on your supplier um, and you really need both together but a warfet gives you a lot of programming options there are a lot of features on a warfet that you can change and again 60 pounds i'd say it's still in the realms of affordable and then your final option as we mentioned before if you're going for gate items and you want the, the optical trigger and all the sensors and full programming you'd be looking at the titan uh, the titan advanced i think is the the top of the range currently uh, somebody can correct me in the comments if i'm wrong on that one i don't really have any experience with titans uh, they're not something i use but they retail for around about 130 to 140 pounds uh, you can pay more than that it just depends how available they are at the time they are very popular i know a lot of people use them i don't knock them it's just that you know i don't use them myself i have no experience with them so that's your, your price ranges you know with all that out of the way i mean really you've seen the prices you're looking at let's uh let's have a look at um you know whether you need one or not um it isn't an absolute necessity um a lot of people will say that it's an absolute necessity but it really isn't um we mentioned about burning trigger contacts out now i would say if you're going to be using you know a stronger motor and a, a larger battery such as an 11.1 .1 volt lipo with a high discharge rating and a motor that's capable of drawing a lot of current and a heavy spring 
then yes, a MOSFET is a must because you are going to be putting a lot of load on those electrical trigger contacts on that electrical system in general. Uh, MOSFETs are worthwhile addition in there. If you've got a basic replica uh, that you haven't upgraded and you just want to put a 7.4 volt LiPo in there, then no, I, I wouldn't say that a MOSFET is absolutely essential. Uh, I've seen replicas that I've worked on for sight guns that have been running for about nine years and they have no MOSFET in them and the trigger contacts are absolutely fine. No damage to them at all. Now, that tells you something, that they aren't damaged, but everybody will tell you, or oh, you're going to burn out your trigger contacts. That's just simply not true. Um, they will last quite a while. On the other hand, I've had replicas with a MOSFET installed where the MOSFET has burned out within 12 months. So, you know, it's like everything in our hobby, our sport. These replicas do break down, and a lot of it is to do with look of the drawer, of the part that's installed. Um, as a rule, I would say that your trigger contacts, they aren't going to burn out unless you're putting a lot of current through the system. Um, if you have a pre-installed MOSFET, I would say you're absolutely fine with that, unless you intend to do loads of upgrades and you're going to be looking at the programming options. You know, that they're all things to consider. It's, it really boils down to what you want to do with your replica. But if you're going from a, an affordable end of things and you have a pre-installed MOSFET, stick with that until it burns out. If you have a replica that you're only going to be using up to 7.4 volt LiPo's on, there's no need really to install a MOSFET if all you're worried about is trigger contacts. If you want the programming functionality and you want the bit quicker trigger response that you get from a MOSFET, then that is definitely worthwhile in styling a MOSFET for. I would class it as an upgrade rather than an essential. Um, it's part of your upgrade path. And with that in mind, what MOSFETs do I install? Well, oh, let's have a look at this replica here. Just to give you an example. Now this um, started out life as a, it's, it's kind of a Frankenstein replica really. It's, it's got all sorts of different bits and bats attached to it. Um, I built this one myself. This has got a high torque motor, heavy spring in it, 12 to one gears. It's quite a heavy load build. Um, so it does need to be looked after in my opinion by a MOSFET. Now this is a Gate Nano ASR that we mentioned earlier. Now, as you can see, when it's installed in the replica, it does take up a bit of space. But the reason I like these is because you can see the two signal wires here that go to this plug couple here in the back of the MOSFET and also my Dean's connector there. This particular MOSFET has a fuse built in, a firmabaric fuse, so I don't need a separate fuse. I've got plenty of room in the stock and the buffer tube for LiPo batteries in this replica with it being an AR replica. Now this MOSFET doesn't permanently live in this replica. What I tend to do to save myself some money is I have, you can buy these signal leads separate or you can make up your own. So what I do is all of my replicas get wired in with the dual signal lead. And then all I have to do is when I want to take this MOSFET and play with a different replica, I just unplug the MOSFET from the Dean's connector and the signal wire, and I plug this MOSFET into the signal wire and Dean's connector of whatever replica I want to use it on, and it protects my trigger contacts. I have one MOSFET there that I could use in every replica I own, well, apart from the two that I need to do, um, because they're all wired to have the dual signal cable. Now, if you have a, a one that replaces your trigger contacts entirely, then that's stuck in that replica. You can't transfer it from one to another without a lot of work which is one of the reasons I use these. And this will give you all the benefits that you need of a MOSFET. It's not programmable. It doesn't do all the things that the MRF would do, for example. Um, however, it will protect your trigger contacts, allows me to run 11.1 .1 on this replica. I primarily run 7.4 on it, but it is drawing a lot of current because of the, the series of upgrades I've done to it. Um, so yeah, that's that's my installation. Not the neatest in the world, but it works. And because I leave the wires loose like that, I can swap this MOSFET from one to another. So like I say, that is that is a, an example of an ASR. The MRF is a little bit bigger because it has the programming features on it. Um, and that's, that's why I installed them that way. Now, I will do another video at some point 
showing you how to install one of these MOSFETs. I'll do it the way that I do it, showing you how to solder on the signal wires to your existing trigger contacts or to your existing trigger switches, and then plug in whatever of these types of MOSFETs you want. This one has to be soldered in, that one's permanent, but it's very small. But most of the gate range come with these Dean's connectors on. I've already done a video on how to change over to Dean's on your replicas and your batteries. It's well worth having Dean's connectors. If you're going to go with gates, like I say, they have this, this plug-in system, which works for me. And I can't recommend them enough. I love them. I've got loads of them. Um, but like I say, a MOSFET is a personal choice. If, if you decide that you want those features, then go for it. If you have one pre-installed, stick with it. If you want to do upgrades, then, you know, these will work fine for you. You don't need to spend a horrendous amount of money. It isn't the be-all and end-all fix that everybody thinks. It's basically there, improves your trigger response, protects your trigger contacts if you're going to use a heavy load system. And that's about it. Everything else on them is just programming features. It's not part of the MOSFET. It's... They call the whole thing a MOSFET. It's a printed circuit board that's had features added on so you can do various things. But for a MOSFET, that is a basic MOSFET. And that's what it does. So I hope I've uh, I've covered everything that you might need to know about MOSFETs there. Um, I hope we've gone through enough details on MOSFETs. If there's anything else you'd like to know or any details you want to know from me, then drop me a comment below. I will always respond to comments. I might not get back to you straight away. But I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and I'll always respond. So if you have any questions about MOSFETs, then drop me a, a comment below. I'll get back to you. If you've enjoyed the video or found it interesting or useful, then please do drop a like on there. And if you're enjoying my series of videos, and as I always mention, please do subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss any of my uploads. And apart from that, I will look forward to speaking to you in the next one. Thank you very much.